this beats my name. She's so beautiful. Her voice is like an angel's. Something about him shakes me. The way that he always reads my mind. <sighs> Teresa? You. Are you checking me out? You told me you've never known true love. But right now, that look in your eyes, I see a man who has fallen head over heels in love. So who is she, Fox? Who's the woman who's captured your heart? So where'd Daddy go, Mom? You know, Whitney, it's been a long night. He went to the shed again, didn't he? Whenever Daddy's upset about something, that's where he goes. So what's in that shed anyway, Mom? I had no idea this would be in the shed. TC. Oh, my God. You don't need to worry about what's in the shed, Whitney. You just need to know that your father and I love you and we want what's best for you. But, Mom, you don't even ask me what I want. What I think might be best for my own life. If you think that hanging out in supper clubs with Chad singing is what you want, then no, I don't want to hear it. See? You won't even listen to me. Not about this, Whitney. I have made up my mind. Your father's made up his mind. A future of music is just out of the question. We forbid it. When are you and Daddy going to realize that I'm not a little girl anymore, Mom? I'm a woman. And one of these days, I might want to... You know what? Never mind. Whitney! Whitney! You're gonna lose her, Eve. You are going to drive Whitney right back into Chad's waiting arms. My baby's gone. Now I'm all alone. My baby's Hello. Gone. I heard what happened tonight at the Blue Note. Godfather, is there anywhere you don't have hidden cameras? Just one, your bedroom. I've had my fill of your twisted sex games with Rebecca. Heidi meets Paul Bunyan was enough to make me wish for cataracts. And the purpose of your call would be? To tell you to pull yourself together, man. That hothead T.C. Russell nearly caught you with his wife tonight. You saw that too, huh? I don't miss a thing. Including the fact that you're listening to one of Eve's recordings even as we speak. Now turn it off. You're getting sloppy, Julian. Acting like some lovesick fool. An alien concept to you, I'm sure. Damn it, Julian. I won't tolerate this from you again. Put Eve Russell out of your mind. Or else. Did you say you're pregnant?
Ashley Fox. Who's the woman that you've fallen for? Me. You think that I'm in love. It's all over your face. Teresa, you know what? You really are a hopeless romantic. Who would I possibly be in love with? I don't know. I guess I'll just have to wait and see. Suit yourself. I, have you... Have you been out? Oh, well, I went over to the, uh, Crane Recording Studio to have a look. You know, and I found Chad there working late. So, we got the talk in, and we ended up over at the Blue Note. And it turns out my father owns that place, too. He actually bought the Harmony Jazz Club and renamed it after some old dive in Boston. Anyway, um, Whitney and that woman, uh, Liz, were there. And, uh, Chad actually got Whitney to sing. He did? Yeah. Till Dr. Russell showed up and, uh, went off on Whitney for performing in public. You know? And then Coach Russell blew in and went at it with Chad. Again. What do you mean, again? Well... Apparently, Whitney's father caught Chad and Whitney, um, together at the recording studio earlier tonight. And he, like, nearly tore Chad apart. Oh, no. Oh, poor Whitney. Yeah. Then Chad got a job offer in L.A. with some record company, you know, and he wanted Whitney to go with him. Of course, her parents were dead set against that. So they actually got Whitney to, um, to agree to take six months stay in harmony before she decided to do anything, you know? Of course, after the free-for-all at the Blue Note tonight, I mean, all bets could be off. I mean, Whitney went home with her parents, but not before Chad made a really strong point for her to go to L.A. with him, pursue her singing career. All of this happened tonight? Yeah. And you thought you were having problems keeping a hold of little Ethan. Yeah, I feel terrible that I haven't been there for Whitney. I mean, she, she must be a mess. Well, I'm sure Whitney could use her best friend about right now. Yeah, she's always been there for me. It's, it's time I return the favor. Mama's with little Ethan at the cottage. I I'm going to go be with Whitney. Okay. Whitney. I was just calling to check on you. Make sure you're okay after everything that happened tonight. Chad. <laughs> I don't know if I'm ever going to be all right again. You know, I used to think that my life was perfect. You know, I had a wonderful family, great friends, and I had just fallen in love with you. Only now, everything's falling apart. <laughs> Simone hates me. My mom and dad are constantly on my case, and the man I love is moving to California. I don't think I've ever been more miserable. Not ever. Beth, is it true? Are you, are you pregnant? You know it's right, you know it's true. You just heard her. It's a lie, good look at it. Beth's faking it to keep Louise and Sheridan from telling you that they're in love. And the baby you think is yours is probably Louise's. It's true. Sheridan, I'm having Louise's baby. My brother and Beth are having a baby. This is incredible. What's incredible is that lightning hasn't struck Beth dead for telling such a wicked lie. Congratulations. I'm really happy for the both of you. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. Isn't this great, Sheridan? Didn't you learn your lesson years ago when you involved yourself with a then lounge singer, Eve Johnson? Are you really that intent on going backwards? Getting yourself messed up with the likes of that whore and addict again? Damn it, Father, there's nothing wrong with Eve. She's a wonderful woman. Any problems she had back then were of my making. You had your fun with her, Julian. Now move on. 
You're making too much of this. He was married, children, what we had is in the past. See that you keep it there. You know, Father, I've been mulling some things over, you know, sorting some things, and I... I still don't know for sure what really happened to Eve's and my child. How many times must I tell you he died? Eve believes that he's alive. She believes that she was made to think that he died when, in fact, someone stole him from the hospital. The only person I know who's capable of doing something so wantonly cruel is you, Father. Are you accusing me of kidnapping? For once in your life, tell the truth. Did you steal our baby? Is my son with Eve still alive? Whitney, please don't cry. Look, I know things look bad now. But it'll get better. I promise. Yeah, but I don't see how. You know, tonight when I was up on that stage singing, I realized that you were right. I mean, singing, it's in my soul, Chad. And I don't know if I can just turn my back on that now. You can't. But my parents aren't going to stand for it. Look, I love them, and I don't want to go against their wishes, but what you said tonight at the Blue Note was true. I'm going to have to follow my heart at some point. Chad, I just don't know what to do. I wish I was there to hold you. I wish you were, too. But coming over here now would just be asking for more trouble. So come to the studio. I would, but I'm afraid that if my parents find out that I'm not here, they're just going to get even more upset than they already are. Look, I hear you, and I won't pressure you. But if you choose to come, the door will be unlocked, and I'll be waiting. I love you, Chad. I love you too, Whitney. Always. You're gonna lose her, Eve. Stay out of it, Liz. Look, despite the way I feel about you, I honestly care about Whitney. She is my niece. I want her to be happy. And right now, she can't be happy because you're trying to take something away from her that you have no right to take. Exactly what part of stay out of it did you not understand? You heard her sing tonight, Eve. She has an amazing voice. An incredible gift. A gift you gave her. I don't care. She is not going into the music business. I forbid it. You don't deny her something that is a part of her. Something that makes her happy just because you made mistakes. Okay, I'm not listening to this. Oh, but you better listen. Whitney is not you, Eve. You made terrible choices with booze and drugs and getting involved with Julian Crane, but Whitney is not going to do the same thing. She is a level-headed young woman, just like you and TC raised her to be. So if you support her, she can pursue her dream, and, and she'll be fine. But if you try to stop her, it's going to backfire. Whitney's going to end up just the way you were. No. <sighs> Singing is in Whitney's soul. It is a part of her very being. So nothing you can do and, and nothing you can say is going to take that away from her. Lisa and Beth are having a baby. Isn't this incredible? Yeah. Incredible. This is perfect. You and I are going to be fathers together. Yeah. And, and your baby, it's going to be born around the same time as ours. They're going to grow up together. They're going to be as close as two cousins can possibly be. We'll be half-siblings if Luis fathered Sheridan's baby, too. Things couldn't be any better than this. Well, I just found out about this myself. Just now. I didn't want anyone to know. Liar! You saw Sheridan coming and made sure she heard you. I, um, I wasn't really planning on telling anyone that I was pregnant. Why not? Excuse me? Why would you keep such great news a secret? Good luck getting out of this one, Betty.
You denied it before, and I believed you because it was easier than thinking you could possibly be that evil. But to hell with easy. I want the truth. I demand the truth. Did you make it appear that my son with Eve died when in fact he was spirited out of that hospital as Eve helplessly looked on? You demand the truth? You, my spineless wretch of a son? Yes, I do, damn it. And I know how you abhorred the idea of, of Eve, a black woman, giving birth to a crane heir, and given your Machiavellian nature. Did you, in fact, orchestrate a cover-up to make Eve and I believe that our baby died? We're talking about my child. Father, we're talking about my son, a crane. I want the truth, damn it. Ah, he wanted to uh, see me, Father. Don't you ever knock? Fox, I'm glad you're here. Oh, you are? Father, we are not through talking yet. Fox, I want you to take care of something for me. It has to do with the Blue Note Jazz Club. That's so funny, because I wanted to talk to you about the Blue Note, too. I thought I could just go Get ahead rid of and... it. What? What? Put it up for sale immediately. No, but I wanted to manage both the Blue Note and the recording studio. I mean, we could make a fortune using the two of them in tandem. Take Whitney Russell, for instance. I saw her singing at the Blue Note earlier tonight, right? She could headline there while I used the recording studio to get her a record deal. There's a lot of money to be made in the music business. I told you to sell the Blue Note. And I told you to stay away from Whitney Russell. And you're not to, to get involved with record deals or any of that. Why? And why are you so protective of Dr. Russell's daughter? I just answered my own question, didn't I? You know, I knew I walked in on something between you and Dr. Russell earlier tonight at the Blue Note. You know nothing. I know I saved your butt when Coach Russell almost caught you with his wife. So what's the deal, Father? Hmm? What's up between you and Dr. Russell? Yes, Julian. What's up between you and Eve? Don't stop Whitney from singing, Eve. She may not make the same mistakes that you did. And besides, Whitney has Chad to help guide and build her career. Chad? Chad is the problem. Whitney would have never sang at the Blue Note tonight if Chad hadn't encouraged her to. Chad loves her. Chad wants her to be happy, and singing makes her happy. <gasps> Chad wants Whitney to move to L.A. with him and be his live-in squeeze. That's what that's about. Think all the times that I supported that boy, defended him to T.C. But no more. That is it. T.C. is right. He is, he's unprincipled. First he beds Whitney, and then he, he puts in her head notions of fame and fortune. God, if I had only followed my first intuition about him, I would have forbidden my girls to have anything to do with this, this street punk whose parents are God knows who. Chad is hardly a punk. And, and you can't possibly blame him for not knowing who his parents are. You know, I saw a lot of Julian in him when I was watching him tonight. How so? He will destroy Whitney's life. Just in the same way that Julian destroyed mine if I let him. Oh, oh, look. First of all, you destroyed your own life. And secondly, Chad is nothing like Julian Crane. Fox, however, he's just like his father. Fox is nothing like Julian. He came to my rescue tonight, foiling your attempt to have TC catch me with Julian. You know, you were fooled by Julian Crane all those years ago, and now you're being fooled by his son. Luckily, Whitney is too level-headed to be fooled by the likes of a crane. She's not going to be fooled like you were. Wait, it's me. Oh. Hey, Teresa. Oh, I came as soon as I heard. Fox told me everything. I'm so sorry you're going through this. You know, I feel like my life is falling apart, and I don't know what to do about it. You know, my parents, they don't want me involved with Chad at all. <laughs> and as far as my singing, dead set against it doesn't even describe how they feel. 
What about you? How do you feel? I'm, I'm really hurt, frustrated, and even angry at how unfair my parents are being about this. I mean, they don't even care how I feel. I love Chad, and I love singing. I didn't realize it how much until tonight, but Chad really brought it out in me big time. Fuck said you were incredible. <laughs> you know, part of me just wants to run away with Chad right now and move to Los Angeles with him. Try to make it as a singer. <laughs> just forget about what my parents want me to do, waiting six months. What would you do, Teresa? I mean, would you choose love? Or your family? Why wouldn't you tell anyone you're pregnant? Why would you keep such wonderful news a secret? Well, I, it's still so early in my pregnancy. Um, you know, the doctor was worried that I might miscarry, so I just wanted to make sure that everything was okay before I said anything. Yeah, I want you're going to be fine. You just need to take it easy. Let Luis take care of me, Dad. <laughs> I just can't believe this. Not only am I going to be a father, but I'm going to be an uncle again, too. I cannot wait to tell Mama she's going to be so happy. And me and you, we're going to be fathers together. Can you believe that? Yeah. Yes. Fathers. <laughs> you know what? You can't put it off any longer. What? Got to make it official. You and Beth need to get married. What would you do in my situation? Would you choose love or family? Whitney, I can't answer that. Only you know what's right for you. Besides, I'm so the wrong one to ask for advice. <laughs> I mean, look how my life ended up. I chose my love for Ethan over everything else. I believe that love conquers all, and no matter what, if, you know, if I held on to it, that love would see me through. I still want to believe that it will, and that someday, Ethan and I will be together. But for now, I've lost Ethan, my job, and all the money and power that went with being a crane. Whoa, wait, Teresa, back up a second. I mean, you make it sound like Julian divorced you and left you with nothing. <laughs> you don't know. I was never married to Julian. What? Yeah, that ceremony Bermuda. It was just a joke that one of Julian's friends pulled on him. You've got to be kidding me. No. And now Julian wants full custody of my son. You know, just because he's a crane. But Ethan has promised to help me fight Julian. But I'm scared, you know? I am really scared I could lose my son. I know. Baby, I'm so sorry that you're going through this. I know how much you love little Ethan. Yeah, he means everything to me. You know, I really hope you don't take this the wrong way. But I know that my mom is worried that I'm going to end up like you did. You know, having a baby without being married. Why? I don't know. I mean, she just thinks that me having a relationship with Chad and wanting a career in singing is going to completely ruin my life. Uh, this doesn't make any sense. I know, but try telling my mom that. She just doesn't understand that no matter what I decide to do with my life, I'm going to follow her example and live my life exactly the way she has. Whitney is not going to have a life like mine because I am not going to let her. I am not going to let her be pulled away from her family into alcohol and drugs and jazz clubs. I love my daughter, and I'd be damned if I'm just going to sit by and watch her life be destroyed the same way mine was. What am I going to do? I'm just going to see Whitney get pregnant by Chad and then be alone and scared because he's abandoned 
her and their baby just the way Julian abandoned me. I'm not going to have Whitney suffer that agony of wondering where that baby is every day for the rest of her life. It's like missing a piece of yourself. And you, you, you want to find that baby so you can hold him. Why are you talking like this? The baby you had with Julian died. I don't believe that. I think he's... he's out there somewhere. I think my baby's still alive. Well, Father, what's the story between you and Dr. Russell? I told you to let it go, Fox. Erase. From your memory of what you saw earlier tonight, never speak of it again. Ooh, methinks I've hit a nerve. Listen, if you care about your inheritance, you'll drop this. Yeah. Yeah, nice try, Father, but uh, you're forgetting something. I'm your only heir. Yeah, Ethan's a Bennett, remember? And I know you're not going to leave my sisters anything. And God forbid you leave anything to Teresa's son. I mean, according to Crane Pride and Prejudice, anyone with Latin blood is too tainted, too unclean to inherit a dime. So, uh... Ugh. I'm all you got. Don't be so sure of that. What are you saying, Grandfather? Are you saying there's another crane air out there we don't know about? Fox, you're as foolish as Julian. You should have learned by now never to question me. When I want you to know something, I'll tell you. I'm coming to bed, Mr. Crane. <laughs> Go limber up, sweetie. I'll be there soon. I look forward to being of service, Mr. Crane. It's getting late. Too late to waste any more of my time with Tweedledee and Tweedledum. Fox, I told you to sell the blue note, see that you do so immediately. Yes, Grandfather. Don't stand there slack-jawed like your idiot father. Go. I wonder what I walked in on. Shut the damn door. Father, you haven't answered my question yet about the son I had with Eve. Is he alive or not? Good night, Julian. Don't dismiss me, Father. And you earlier alluded to there being another crane heir. Is there or is there not? And if so, is he the son I had with Eve? What makes you think that the son you had with Julian is alive? Oh, you must enjoy seeing me like this. Just watching me suffer. Well, you get yourself a good look. Because this is all you're going to get. I'm not going to discuss my son with you. It hurts too much. Eve, I don't get any pleasure seeing you upset about this. It's terrible to lose a child. Oh, God, you have no idea. Please, just go. Just go knowing that my life is not the fairy tale that you claim it is. Eve, I really want to... Please, just leave me alone, okay? Just leave me alone. don't find out I left the house tonight. I just... I just don't want to upset them any more than I already have. 
But right now I need to be with Chad. I love him so much. I know you do. <laughs> um, Chad said he left the door open for me, oh. so. <laughs> Baby is gone, and I don't know who to blame. Since you've been away, nothing to say. Oh. I'm glad you decided to come back. Well, love decided for me. You've made your choice, Whit. You've chosen love over family. You just don't know it yet. But my baby is gone. I'm so happy for the both of you. Congratulations on starting family like Sharon and I. Not now, Louise. No, I need to talk to her. Hey, I need to explain. Sheridan's just been hit with this. Now she needs time to adjust. Well, that's why I need to talk to her. She needs to know how much I love her. Now, look, what happened with Beth and her brother, you see, that doesn't change anything. All right, we still need to step up to the plate and end these lies just like we planned to. But you cannot tell Antonio the truth. Sheridan's an emotional wreck. She can't take anymore. Right. But what if Beth's pregnancy drives a wedge between us? One of the things with me and Sheridan go from bad to worse. Honey, come over here and give Beth a hug. Congratulate her and Luis on their great news. Is there another crane error? Is he Eve's and my baby? Did our son live after all? So many questions, Julian. Questions with answers that could astound everyone. Damn it, Father, I want the truth. All in due time, Julian. All in due time. Father? Damned old man! Could Eve's vision be real? Could her instincts be, be right? Could I have another son out there somewhere? Hold me, Chad. Just hold me. I don't want to think about anything except being in your arms. Whatever makes you happy. You make me happy. I love you so much. I love you too, baby. Love you. Whitney and Chad love each other so much. Please, God, let them be happy together. Don't let anyone or anything tear them apart.
always loved beautiful things. You, Whitney and Russell. You are a beautiful woman. Very beautiful. Congratulations, Rev. Thanks, Sheridan. I'm so happy for you and Beth. I told you my plan would work. Luis thinks he slept with me the night he broke up with Sheridan. You mean the night you drugged his beer? Faking being pregnant with his baby means the end of Luis and Sheridan and the start of our life. I told you, Luis is gonna be mine. You are evil, Betty, with brimstone for a heart. Is that any way to talk to the mother? Of your first fake grandchild? Oh. I'm sure that you and Beth will be very happy together. I think our son is alive, and I think Father knows exactly where he is. Are you asking me to marry you? I figured out a way to give Luis his baby and get rid of Sheridan at the same time. Sheridan? Sure. Sheridan! Sure. NBC Thursday. It's the one show that's been called everything in the book. How long till they give you? Now. Get ready for the episode that will remind you why. That's my brother. What's going on? We're taking him to the OR. A superb hour of television that lives up to the hype. We have the ability to save, but not the will to do it. As one man brings an entire hospital together to make a miracle. An all-new ER, NBC Thursday.